we're an active subscription management company, uh, which means we issue virtual debit cards in order to allow you to manage the seasonality of your subscriptions. Uh, we also um, done a recent ICO, uh, the first one ever on Cardano, and we have a sign up that's uh, 3 million users with 200 uh, that are active already. Um, so we're one of the biggest builder communities on Cardano, and we also have our own venture fund, uh, which is investing in pre-ICO companies on Cardano. Tell us, in your region, what's the situation of uh, DeFi now? How is it getting adopted? Are it still, the, of course, the uh, DeFi must be having more adoption, but how things are with the DeFi in your region? Absolutely. So uh, just for context, we're based out of Croatia and Estonia, so we operate in the European Union. Um, so it's two legs of the Europe. Yes, Europe. yes, exactly. It's a two legs. Uh, so it's an interesting, uh, interesting play. I would echo everything that my colleagues on the panel said, which is uh, there's definitely traces of coexistence in both CFI and DeFi. Uh, you can definitely see uh, along the user adoption curve uh, some of the people who are newcomers uh, because of the user experience, because of the clarity, uh, CFI products are preferred. Uh, but really, uh, and we see this in our user base as well, the more you go towards younger generations, so the Gen Z, people who are born with these types of products, the more they're open for uh, both new experiences, but also slightly, um, you know, even edgier products with a, a higher risk profile and risk appetite. So they are really the ones, if, you, if we talk about Europe, Gen Z is really driving the, uh, let's say, mainstream adoption. Uh, DeFi products, along with obviously uh, you know early adopters in general of tech who are already familiarized with the space. So um, I would say that that's kind of the, the demographic or the user split that we see around Europe. Thank you for bringing some trivia sentiment for the DeFi rule. Regulation is, I would absolutely agree, along with the legacy one of the biggest hurdles. And, and uh, the problem here really is just lack of clarity for the builders and the entrepreneurs everywhere around the world. So what's happening and what Europe is seeing, especially some of the smaller European countries, and I think Estonia and Lithuania are perfect examples of this, is that we're seeing incredibly powerful US companies getting squeezed out because of the SEC regulation. They're coming to Europe and saying, you guys at least have some sort of regulatory sandbox. Let's fund certain initiatives that are either illegal already in our country or kind of, you know, um, they're, they're becoming increasingly dangerous to do. Um, and let's try to fund them and build them in Europe. Um, and, and what this is creating is really, on one side, it's an incredible advantage for some of the smaller countries that have that may have a flexible uh, regulatory framework, but also it's, it's an incredibly um, dangerous situation where you just don't have a clue as a regulator, uh, or sorry, as a builder, um, what's happening. I think it's really impressive that uh, uh, we've, Yesterday and today, there are two exchanges that are regulated by the Central Bank of Ukraine. I think that's incredibly, uh, it's an incredibly powerful signal to the market that those, that sort of thing is happening. And uh, I think on the regulation side, uh, what certain governments are increasingly watching for are uh, positive precedents from other countries of how things can be done and what are some of the, let's say, progressive regulations they can adopt. Because the classical thing here is, us as entrepreneurs, we we don't want to be in the dark, we want to be regulated, but we want clarity and transparency while doing it so that we know exactly what can and cannot be done. Uh, but doing that for, if for C5 was challenging, but doing that for D5 is, is almost too big of a you know, puzzle for the regulators. They have to be educated as well, and uh, it's, we're still in the early days. Right. I think if we talk about all of these trends, there's a way to do it properly, and there's a way to do it like a fad. Uh, I think everyone as a user and as a builder knows the difference quite well. Uh, the fundamental value of NFTs is real and it's here. Uh, but there are many free riders that are, that are just riding the wave and really not doing much of value and just trying to skim the market for the hype. Uh, but I think that's a common thing and everyone who's in, in crypto and DeFi in general is quite accommodated with that phenomenon. So I would say that the good part of the NFTs is here to stay. Uh, the hype, as with all of these facts, will at some point fade away, but the stuff will remain. Well, you mentioned about the principal fundamentals of all these. In fact, all of these, even the ICO and the converts, they all had very strong fundamentals and uh, use case, but most of them were the things abused. 